This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we're gonna be piping a buttercream frilly anemone. It's a different style of anemone, and we hope you enjoy it. The video is broken down into steps, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. So let's make the colors for our frilly style anemone flower. We're gonna make three colors. We're using all American style buttercream and the following liquid gel colors. Violet, neon bright pink, royal blue, lemon yellow, and finally, a little bit of coal black. I've got some of each out on a little lid here and some toothpicks to get started. And I'm gonna start with kind of a nice um, color that's in between pink and purple. And I just wanna make a light shade first. So just a couple little specks of that neon bright pink and a few of my purple. I started with two pink and three purple. We're just gonna give this a mix around and we wanna make a nice light shade. And then we're gonna pull just a little bit over to the side and make a darker shade. I'm going to use that to stripe my bag with. So I like where this is going, just going to go a little more. Wonderful. So we have a nice pastel color going. It's really nice and light. Just that kind of hint of that purpley pink. We think of it as kind of like a lilac color. And I'm just going to pull a tiny bit over to one side. And I'm going to make a darker color. So just a little bit on one side. And I'm just going to mix this with a lot more of that pink and purple just to give me a more intense shade. So I give myself a little stripe of that in my bag. So same kind of ratio, just much more color, much less buttercream will give us a nice darker shade. That's looking beautiful. I'm just gonna get some more pink in it. Gorgeous, and that gives us two colors for our petals. So the next thing I'm gonna make is just a little bit of green. And just see, I have a tiny bit of buttercream in there. I'm gonna start with my royal blue. Give it a couple of big specks. Go in, do the same with my yellow. So think approximately same amounts, and I'm just gonna give it one of my black. Just because I don't want it to be like a bright shade, I want it to have just a little hint of that gray in it. Just give it a quick mix around and see where we are. Might need to add a touch more blue and a touch more of that black. Try to go light on the black and add more if needed. Later on. So I think I definitely want a little more black. Because it's looking a little bright. You can really see that yellow from the lemon coming through. I just want it to be a little bit dull. There we go. And that is lovely. See, we have a nice shade of green. So for our final color, we're gonna make just a little bit of yellow. And we want to go with a nice kind of mustardy yellow. So I'm just gonna use some of that lemon. Nice big speck. And 
just going to give it the tiniest touch of black. And typically this results in kind of like an electric mustard color. So it's like a cool tone yellow. It's really nice. But again, with the black, go light at first, add more if you need to. So it's nice. Just going to go tiny touch more in the black and a little more on that yellow. And there we have a wonderful, cool shade of mustard yellow. So for this project, we are using three 12 inch disposable decorating bags. They're all fitted directly with the tips. The first one we're using is a 124K. It's an Atico tip that comes as part of a set. It's a really nice one. And you can see I've got it striped with my two colors that I made for my petals. I have a small star tip. This one's a number 14, but you can use any small size star tip you want. And I've got that with my mustard color. And finally, I have a number three tip on my bag with my green. So you can see just a nice size round tip. We don't want it too small or too big. So let's talk about the techniques that we're gonna to use to create the various different petal shapes and other elements in our flower. The first is a soft arc, and we're gonna do our typical arc shape, and we're just gonna wave it at the top so we get a little ruffle. So we're kind of almost flat against the surface, End of the bag is gonna be over towards three o'clock and we are going to go and just wave as we pull our petal. And that's gonna give us a nice little ruffle edge. And then we're gonna do some different styles of petals, ones that are almost like cupped petals. And in this case, we're gonna start in a normal position, kind of this opening of the tip, the fat end is gonna to be towards the center, the skinny end is gonna be off and kind of pointing towards noon. And we're gonna rock it so that we pull the opening of the tip up and then pull back. And that's gonna give us kind of these cupped shaped petals that stand up on themselves, aren't those beautiful? So it's a rocking motion with that tip. We're starting kind of almost with the opening against the surface, pushing, rocking up and pulling back. So then it's straight up and down. So it's gonna be a little different than some traditional petals, but it's gonna give us a really beautiful, delicate effect. Next, we're gonna do something that I like to call fold over petals, just for lack of a better name. And I'm gonna start it almost like the cupped ones, but instead of pulling straight back, I'm actually going to fold it over top. And this is gonna give it a nice kind of unfurling look. So we're gonna draw back and then pull over, right? So it's gonna pull over and kind of end. And these are kind of like, they fold over a little bit. And when we're doing them on the flowers, they're gonna have more support from the things around them and they'll really open up and they're gonna look beautiful. Other things we're gonna do with that bag is pipe a disc at the beginning. That's really easy. We're just gonna set it up with the fat end towards the middle of our flower nail, the opening flat on the surface, and we're gonna spin while we squeeze. And this is gonna act as a support. So for the finishing details for these flowers, we're gonna make some little pillars or spikes with a number three tip. So just a matter of squeezing with that green and pulling up while we squeeze. And then we're gonna surround it with some more and that's gonna help create a center. And then we're gonna do some small stars with that number 14 and our mustard color around it. And this is gonna give us the look of little bits of pollen or stamen. And stars are really nice and easy. Just above the surface, hover like you're gonna make a dot, squeeze, let the frosting come out, stop and pull away. And that'll give you a nice full star. And because we're using a tiny tip, they'll be tiny. So that covers the techniques we're gonna use. Now let's talk about how to put them together. Let's talk about how we're gonna build this blossom. We're gonna start out by piping a disc in the center, and then we're going to pipe 
those flat, soft arc petals that have that just little bit of ruffle on the edge around that and kind of connecting to it. You don't have to fully fill in. There's probably gonna be some gaps. The other petals you're gonna pipe are gonna fill in those gaps along with the center that we're gonna do on top of it. But that disc is gonna help everything connect together and give us a nice stable flower that'll be easy to move onto our cakes later. We're probably gonna do about five of those soft arc petals all the way around, and then we're gonna pipe the other petals on top of it. We'll do some cupped petals anywhere we need to, where there's a gap between some of our arcs or anything like that, just to join anything together. And on the edge of, right, so either side of each of those soft arc petals. So we'll do the cupped ones on the outside, and then we'll start doing fold over petals, and they'll get longer as we go towards um, the kind of top of that arc, and then they'll get shorter again as we go back. So it's kind of graduating in size. We go from cupped to fold over, those fold overs get bigger as we go to the top of the arc, and then they get smaller again, and we go back to cups. And then we'll go all the way around, and we'll do that series on top of each of those flat, soft arc petals, and then we'll come back in between do some cups anywhere we need to, even on top of the bottom of those little fold over petals just to give it a little more variety and fullness towards the center. And we can even push some little petals in between the sets of petals if we feel like it needs extra support. I don't always do this, but sometimes it is necessary and it adds a little variety and we'll show you those as well. But it's just that same kind of push motion anywhere we need to. And then finally, we're going to finish it off by doing the pillars in the center and then adding stars around on the outside. And then go all the way around those outsides and then even up onto the petals a little bit on some of them just to add in that little hint or pop of yellow. It really helps the centers stand out. So let's get started. We're going to start with the fat end of our tip in the center the opening laying on the surface, the back of the bag is towards three, and you can see I'm just going to quickly spin while holding that in place. And that gives me a nice little disc there in the center that I can attach everything to. And it's gonna help make my flowers nice and stable. So I wanna just imagine head, arms, and feet there because we're gonna do five petals, and we're gonna start with the soft arc. So. We're just going to start here at the top, so fat end is towards the center, and pull a nice soft arc where my head is, and then just go in. Arms, legs. There we go. And you can see there have five petals. There's little gaps between those um, soft arc petals and our disc, and that is just fine. Let's work on some of those little cupped petals. And I'm gonna start here, kind of right at the edge of that disc that I made, and at the bottom of my soft arc petals where they kind of curve towards the center. And I'm just gonna be fat in towards the center, skinny end out, almost laying flat, and I'm gonna push out rock it up and pull it back. And you can see it's really standing up now. It's kind of wedged in between those two. And I'm gonna keep working, right? And anywhere I have a little bit of a gap, I'm just gonna go in and put one of those in between if it needs it. You can see, you get that nice kind of folding over cupped shape. It's really beautiful. So I'm gonna do a couple of those on the edge here. And they can almost lay on top of each other if you'd like. And then I'm gonna start with my fold over. So I'm gonna pull it out a little longer and then pull back and kind of give it some drama. So pull out and fold it over. And you can see they're now kind of standing up and they have almost a support system, right? And you get that really beautiful look from the side. That's really where the drama kind of happens with these. And then this is gonna be the top, right? So that's the outermost one. And then I'm gonna start going a little bit shorter with all of the subsequent ones until I get back 
to my little cupped ones over here on the side. And if you need to, want to, you can put on a little extra one. And where all of these join together, you can put one on right at the base. Just if you need to, just to cover up the ends and give us a nice full look. So you can see that really has some body to it now. And we're gonna go around and do this on all of these soft arc petals. So these are kind of like a little template that you're piping on top of and it's gonna give it support and stability. So start with my little cupped ones and then draw out those nice ones that fold over. So I'm just gonna keep going until I make it all the way around. Make sure you get longer as you reach the top of that arc of the petal and then get shorter and finally finish with cupped ones at the edge. And really quickly, you'll see, we get a beautiful, beautiful flower taking shape. And just don't forget to put some extra petals in there whenever and wherever you need them. And at the end, if you need to, rock your bag up just a little bit, the back end, for squeezing any petals in. Because sometimes that is the best way to fit them in without knocking into or disturbing any of your beautiful work. just anywhere it needs it, an extra little petal. But let's start working on finishing our flower. We're going to pipe a nice pillar in the center and then go all the way around it. So just work in there with that green. I like to pull them almost as if I'm pulling towards a central point. So now let's switch to our 14 that has our yellow and we're gonna work around it. <clears throat> so around that mass we made with the green and just pipe little stars. So I like to go around first. Just make sure you're getting close enough that they connect. And you can see that already gives us the look of a flower center, but we can even trail up. So up some of the petals so it has a little bit of an uneven effect and you get the look of almost like pollen scattering over the center of the flowers and up on some of the petals the way you do on lilies sometimes. And that gives us a nice full and connected center along with the disc that we made underneath that's gonna make these easier to transfer over to our cakes later. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.